Well, this will be a fun one. What is the theme of this video? Well, making bridge officer builds. Specifically melee builds. Just throwing that in there. I'm going to go over some basic uh, build stuff, like give them gear that's, you know, not junk. Hey, you don't have to get the top shelf here, but at least don't give them white Mark 12 garbage. I mean, like this. Come on now. It does way, way less damage. Anyways, though. So, what should you do? And what did I do with these particular builds that I thought was fun and interesting and actually dangerous? Well, then the first thing to remember about choosing skills for a bridge officer. Bridge officers will activate them just because they exist. So, okay. Uh, let's back up one second. Horse but here is an Andorian bridge officer that I got in the old version of the Federation tutorial from... Well, I think it was actually the launch era version of the tutorial. The one where you go to Vega, have to fight your way through a poor infestation of the colony on Vega. And you actually pick up your bridge officer along the way. Anyway. I actually get uh, used one of the elite training tokens on her. Which, quite frankly, Endorians actually do have good traits for melee. None of them actually gives them a bonus to melee, but they're all things that are Useful for melee, anyways. Not ideal traits, but you know, useful. Now, so, Resident Attack in Street. Um, yeah. Um, these are showing the wrong numbers because I'm in space. You know what? Switch the structure for As a general rule, um, when it's a melee bridge officer and you want the bridge officer to actually engage in melee combat, you give them buff abilities, debuff abilities, because those will get used immediately as soon as the bridge officer aggros an enemy. They will just burn all of those and then just start wailing on them with their weapon because all of their abilities are now on cooldown. That's because the AI has very, very simple logic. It doesn't have complicated checks like, oh, it, how much damage per second would this buff uh, give me? Do I need it to kill this particular enemy? No, 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 they don't do stuff like that. They just murder. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Raider Bridge, now available on everything. Which is actually quite nice. Pretty good bridge. Lots of services. They're very spacious. They have bridge officers have plenty of room to sit. That guy's been sitting. Whatever. Anyway, not bad. First of all, like, like I said before, like this is a, a debuff. Uh, pull off a large chunk of enemy shield. Recover your shield. Uh, buff shield resistance. And then for 12 seconds, can't use it again. Target optics! Hey, you know, bonus damage, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is an interesting one because the fact that it um, cancels their own threat. And if the AI is smart enough to actually flank your target or lucky, they'll get bonus damage. Not necessarily amazingly good, but, I mean, it's an option that works. Lunge. Yeah. Of course, this AI will use target optics, probably resonant pack and stream, probably that, and then lunge the target. Yeah, that's cool. And after she lunges the target, slice them up with Mark 14 period items. I think I upgraded those before. 
Mark 15 existed. I'm not sure. Whatever. All right, I, I'm going to do. Oh yeah, get frame. I forgot. Unlike most of my bridge officers, uh, she actually has a good frame. This one gives her bonus. Uh... Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, she actually can't use the psionic damage thing. No. Yes, yeah, like sweeping strikes, plasma grenade, and photon grenade. She's not actually. Using this. Eh, whatever. Yeah, that kid frame doesn't. It gives her uh, shield resistance, but not really a whole lot. Else. Okay. Some of my br characters I actually uh, went and decided to make two. Why? Me? Because I can. All right, um, this character, I actually gave her the entire Terran Task Force set. All of it. Entire 3B set. Yeah, details. Yeah, what is this, uh, set box? Set? Yeah, your bridge officers will actually do that. Like I said before, you give them any abilities, the AI will just activate them because they exist. This is, you know, also there. It doesn't help much. It's just a proc that happens sometimes with these healing effects. Um, this, though, like 1% melee physical damage, that's actually just a passive buff. Anyway, um, is this an amazing set for melee on a bridge officer? Nah. It does actually do, uh, useful things, but it over overpowered nonsense, no. Nah. It certainly works, though. Oh, also, is that this, uh, tactical repositioning thing? If they stab your, the enemy in the back, it actually will work. Let's see, which kit was this? Oh, Xindi kit. Hmm. Increased exploit damage. Now, melee combos can do exploit damage, so maybe bonus armor, bonus kit performance. Now, her kits, battle strategies, again, buff, lunge, it's an attack she'll use almost immediately. Tactical EMP buff arm. This is actually a ranged attack, but it, it's something that is useful because of the fact that it uh, weakens the enemies before she attacks them. And of course, ambush. Massive bo uh, damage bonus. If she... The AI will actually sometimes uh, chain the abilities to like battle strategies, ambush, and then tactical Bombardment and then lunch somebody if they survive the EMP bombardment. So, again, it's just like which order the AI randomly chooses to use the abilities in. One of the things I mentioned earlier the AIs are dumb. They, they will spam abilities just because those abilities exist. So, give them abilities that you don't mind if they spam incessantly. Battle strategies and ambush are great examples of that. These, well, hey, you know what? Damage the enemy. enemy. That, that's kind of a goal. Alright, so, uh, hmm. The previous two bridge officers that I looked at were tactical officers. This is a uh, science officer. I don't think... No, no, I have actually done it on engineers. Yeah. So... Oh yeah, traits. Her traits are actually terrible for melee specialists. This one kind of works. This one kind of works. No, no. These do absolutely nothing for melee builds. So two of her traits are relevant. The other two don't. Skills. Medical tricorder. Eh, self-heal, heal allies, whatever. 
It's a climbing suppression field. Yeah, it's that one again. But a lower rank. Would tonic These are amusing because of the fact that your bridge officer will activate them as soon as the bridge officer aggroes anything. I mean anything. You, you're walking around a Nimbus, an enemy looks at you funny. Suddenly, your bridge officer summons a photonic decoy, and then the decoy spends the next 10 or 15 minutes running around aggroing things. Because your bridge officer can heal the photonic decoy with a medical right. Eh. If you really, really want your bridge officers to go rampant and murder everything on the map, uh, hey, you know what? It works. That setup will actually cause your bridge officers to just go all over the place. Uh, okay, deploy a tripwire drive. This will actually knock enemies down and so that your bridge officer can jump on the enemy and just ruthlessly angle them. Yes, that's right. I gave her the entire disco rep suit. All of it. Even gets the uh, uh, two piece or two percent bonus damage because I'm at tier six in the disco rep. Actually, does decent damage with uh, uh, pounding people. With this. Same with ball movements. Both of these are like full weapon sets. But it's like d different abilities get used differently. I I use a lot of intel abilities in uh, melee builds for bridge officers because of the fact that intel actually has certain things that genuinely are designed to benefit melee. Granted, a lot of them are things that are just generally useful, but intel is but rather unique in that regard. Like, this, this bridge officer doesn't even have a specialization. These, these however, are quite uh, useful. All right. Now for the next one. Okay, so, again, this one's a tactical officer. Different set of melee weapons. This is an amusing one because of the fact that the way that the EV suits thing works, you actually can get a two-piece bonus from an EV suit while not wearing the EV suit. The opposite doesn't work. If you're in an EV suit environment, it doesn't give you two-piece bonuses from your regular arm. Just your EV suit. But your EV suit is all the time. I don't know. I don't understand why. It just, that's how it works. Now, um, Violent Discharge. This is the set that has a cryo pulse wave. If I remember correctly? Yeah, cryo launcher. So, um, she's not using that. Instead, she's using Sompec gloves. Are they the best? Yeah, they're quite effective. This, though, is interesting because of the fact that the absorption lattice thing says all damage. Which, yeah, that actually does work on melee attacks. Why they coded it that way, I don't know. But I think that has something to do with the fact that it's intended to work with a non-standard uh, energy damage type cold damage that is and thus they needed to uh, do so either 5% cold damage or 5% this they couldn't just make it do energy weapon damage because cold uh, is not a uh, regular energy weapon damage type anyway though threads yeah she's a colony Romulan so she has those. And yeah, she was one of the ones that doesn't come with that superior Romulan operative. Because she's an old one from before they made it so that superior Romulan operative was normal. Um, yeah. Alright. 
Oh yeah, skills. Um, she has a photon grenade, uh, two buff abilities, and lunge. Again, it's like, do damage to enemies, buff yourself, whatever. Uh, next up. And this one is Lyman. If I can find out. Where did that thing hide? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. Uh, I, I was thinking of it. Okay, again. Find Mel Device. Let's go ahead. Yeah, he's getting a two piece for having the environmental suit. This is interesting because of the fact that this particular shield, it actually can give you hit point and uh, shield regeneration just because your shield's low. That's pretty sweet stuff. So you're doing melee and, you know, self healing. His traits, like with the other ones, well, some of the other uh, bridge officers I was looking at earlier. Uh, yeah, his traits aren't very good for this. But, you know, this is actually pretty much the same setup I, I used on one of my other bridge officers. Ambush, launch, that will be people far between battles. Right? Not a particularly creative setup, especially since it's, you know, the same one as one of the other ones. But hey, it works. Right, Lamef is one of is one of Slarg's bridge officers. A lot of these bridge officers, I really didn't sp uh, spend a huge amount of time uh, working on here. here. Like this one, this is just stuff I happen to have. Like it's like, oh yeah, um, this works. I'll, I'll let you have this. Although to be honest, the, the way that uh, Jim had our arm does the shield regeneration thing on covariant shielding really kind of works at counteracting the downside to using covariant shield on the ground. Oh yeah, uh, how does this upgrade? It doesn't. Can't re-engineer it. Oh, that's okay. Anyway, so her traits, again, she's an Orion. Actually, Lymef and Kadumpku are both the um, Delta Ops Orion Intelligence Officer. Different name, same uh, non-standard bridge officer. And they come with all of, with uh, these uh, intel powers, so that's why there's such a heavy overlap in their ability. It's because it's functionally just two boxes. However, Fane Disintegration, Photonic Decoy, by Quarter Scan, and Dresden Attack and Stream are useful in the melee build. So, I let her have those. And yes, she also has Fury on the Fangs because they were Yeah, I have that as an account unlocked because I did that event and it's useful. And here's one of my personal favorites. One that I put some genuine work into. Several of these builds I put together, I just like, oh, I want this person to do a, a, a melee. So I'm going to, you know, give them stuff that works for me. Like, now, I'm not going to tell you that Sinead's traits are actually something that's custom tailored towards doing melee. That one doesn't work for melee. That one doesn't work on ground. These, well, now this is interesting because of the fact that it uh, gives her power recharge for all of her skills and not that aren't her weapon attacks. Interesting. Um, 
I actually used to have her using an, an electrical attack, a uh, technical miss after this instead of waste to toxin dart launcher, but that was because of the fact that I used to have her using the Sumpec set, then I switched it to the Disco set, and I decided I didn't want technical mishap anymore because Okay, when you look at the tooltip, it's space. It looks like it does a lot of damage. It really doesn't do a lot of damage. This, uh, This is my Gemadar character who uses a theme of being a gotcha hunter. And Waste Toxin Dart Launcher just did that better than Technical Mishap did. Um, two heal slash buff abilities. No, this one gives her bonus physical melee damage. That is actually quite good for melee build. And that's part of the reason why I like doing science officers for melee builds. Is that, yes, tactical has things like ambush where it's just like, but all of your powers increase your da the damage of everything you do, which includes melee. Science actually has stuff like this, which is like specific to physical melee damage. And stuff like this, which gives the enemy negative damage resistance rate. And also damage resistance. This, this is just a kill. Sinin, um, yeah, on this case, I get, she currently has the entire disco uh, rep set. This, bridge officers actually do quite a good job of using this. They will activate the tertiary and just like smash the your opponent in the face and then, and then start going into town. Works quite well. Now one of the things with this particular thing uh, is that I, part of the, the idea here is that Sanin will go and aggro the enemy and kind of act like a team for the team because unlike some of the other ones, she has self healing. So enemy injures her, she'll just heal herself and, and then go back to uh, pummeling. Like, I actually gave her a Pavan healing crystal so that she has both a skill to heal with and a device to heal with. That might seem like overkill, but you know what? If you want to do stories on higher difficulty than normal, you actually do kind of sort of have a good use for your bridge officers. It's something... It takes more effort to annihilate everything. Alright. Moving on. And also, you may have noticed that all of my the bridge officers that I have been looking at here have upgraded gear. Because upgrading bridge officer gear is useful. If you want the bridge officers to kill things, that is. And last up. Now, this is one where I had, I, since I have two different bridge officers, like this bridge officer is actually pretty good for physical. Okay, mediocre. I'll put it that way, mediocre. Because none of these actually like directly buffs physical damage, but they don't. Well, okay, this time gives you a tiny damage bonus. And this has flanking exploit stuff, but... Eh. So, again, this is one of those which is like buff and attack enemy. Call it good. One thing to note about physical melee is that when you're doing melee attacks against a target, it will actually impede their ability to run at you. Sometimes, anyways. So if she throws a plasma grenade at someone and then lunches them, um, if they have survived getting lunged, they won't be able to run away immediately. And here we have the, a different one that is a completely different take on a melee build. Because this guy, um, if I remember, right you didn't actually start as an intelligence specialist I think I had to actually give you a spec 
Yeah, and then give him a set of ability. No, 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 wait, no, no. This guy, this guy must be one of the Delta Ops ones because one thing about the Delta Ops officers that makes them unique is that they have a set of intel abilities and completely lack branch abilities. You have to teach them branch abilities because they literally don't know any engineering, uh, science, or tactics. None of the other ones have been like that. So, friction is particle grenade. Damage resistance debuff. Give enemy damage resistance debuff. Hack into pieces. Simple. Photonic decoy. Distract enemies. And this is the in mind. This will actually uh, reduce enemy run speeds, which, when combined with this, is kind of ridiculous. Oh, also, these, uh, when they go off, um, hey, that's a bomb. It, it, exploded in your face. And Tripwire Drone, again. Because Tripwire Drone is one of the most hilarious kit modules the game has ever seen. And it does about as much damage as throwing a grenade at someone. Now, also is a deal. But yeah, it's like, it, it knocks enemies down, so when, uh, if, if you're engaging them in melee... Oh yeah, another thing. Giving your bridge officers pet summon things. Bridge officers will, like I mentioned before, bridge officers will just spam abilities because they exist. So, when she enters combat, she will immediately summon the Crystal Accorta before. Oh, wait a minute. She will, of course, do both, but, you know. Summon Horta, Horta's on cooldown, uh, engage in it. While Horta is in cooldown. And then when Horta comes off cooldown, summon Horta again. If in combat. Most curious. Oh, yeah, he has a bot period on. Yep, that works too. So, yeah, there we go. Giving your bridge officers gear sets that are upgraded greatly improves their effectiveness. Do you need to go to the time and re-engineering them to have what are what you consider to be good for mods. Eh, not necessarily. But, you know. It does kind of help. It is really fun having missions where your bridge officers can, can go around doing all of the murdering for you. And you just uh, pick up loot and uh, do quest objectives. At any rate, that's enough. See you guys later.